Well, to, to follow up on the, the 28 pages, the Saudi involvement in 9-11, the, I'd like to ask you something about HSBC. Now, it, there was recently a settlement, $1.9 billion settlement that uh, HSBC made, which is sounds like a lot of money, but it's really a pittance if you're bringing in at least $10 billion a year illegally. That's just the cost of doing business. Um, this was detailed in a recent Senate report that reads like it should be have been written by a district attorney rather than just by the Senate. This is a, a case for prosecution. I mean, HSBC brought in at least $7 billion from Mexican drug cartels, engaged in $19 billion in illegal transactions with Iran in the course of one week, is connected with Saudi Arabia and the financing of terror linked to al-Qaeda. Now, when the discussion of prosecution came up, Larry Brewer um, had said that were HSBC to be indicted, this would be too dangerous for the financial system. That you know, it would be basically too big to jail, in other words. We, it wouldn't be possible to do it. This goes along with the remarks made by the UN's Costa, the drug enforcement um, uh, official, and Russia's Ivanov, who said that without drugs, we would have had the financial system seize up five years ago. So I'd like to see what you have to say about the role of HSBC in this, particularly, but, but the role of the, the financing aspect of all of this. Well, it continues against uh, in, in the same general area we were just discuss discussing. This involves an operation. For example, the money which is involved in this case is essentially fraudulent money. It's not worth anything. Really, it's not worth anything. It has no real value. It has no, th there is no real redemption. That is no redemption as far as nations and their welfare is concerned in this involved. The whole thing should be shut down. This is the, this firm, by the way, this banking firm, was the opium trading firm in China. That's its legacy. These were the dope pushers of, Ch of China who went into India to get the dope to stuff down the throats of the Chinese. And this was a project which actually, the, Bismarck was overthrown in the course of this thing because that was the reason that the war, the first stage of war, broke out in 1893. The World War, World War Three, World War I, actually began in the launching of the ouster of Bismarck from his position. The ouster of Bismarck led to a number of movements which walked right into what became World War I. The first major act, the first act was the assassination of the, of the president of France. That was done by them. The next step was in, in this direction, to just simply set into motion a series of wars which would change the world for the, that that process. The, tar the major target, many there were many targets. <coughs> the target was largely Russia, I mean, or rather not Russia, but the, Russia was a victim, but was Germany. And the target had been Bismarck. Bismarck had actually prevented a world war from being launched because he had made an agreement while he was chancellor in Germany. He made an agreement with the Tsar of Russia that they would collaborate together to prevent any extension of a war by Austria in the Balkans. Once that Bismarck was discharged by the, a British family member who took over as the uh, ch uh, Chancellor of, Ru of Russia, hmm? or the Prime Minister of Russia, that, that at that point World War I was on. It went through all these stages. It went through the assassination of the President of the United States, who was a part of this thing, which brought in the scumbag as President, huh? and these kinds of things, and led all the way into the Guns of August. And there was a recess at the end of the Guns of August, a recess which was called a peace of Versailles. But it was really just a resting place to start the next World War, which went on and became known as World War II. Now we're in the verge of World War III. 
The difference is chiefly now that the world is in a bigger mess than it was in then and that uh, the thermonuclear weapons have replaced the guns of August. So that any general conflagration on policy against mighty nations like the United States on the one side and Russia, China, India and so forth on the other and you're pushing against both what you're doing in doing so is you're creating the necessary conditions, preconditions for a thermonuclear global war which would take about a, an hour and a half in the age of thermonuclear weapons if the United States was involved. That's what this is all about. The other stuff is distractions.